Hey, welcome to this version of Hope in the Darkness. We're going to be talking about the idea of new hope. Maybe you find yourself right now a little afraid or scared or wondering what the future is going to like, and you're wondering, what is our future going to hold? Maybe you feel very anxious or wondering what the new normal is, if there's one. All of us find ourselves really at a place wondering, what will the future look like, and can I find any hope in where I am? And so we want to talk about that for a little while. I'm reminded of the story of a little boy that was in his front yard and he was throwing up his ball and trying to hit it. And there was a man that was walking by and he noticed. And I mean, this kid was just relentless, throwing up the ball and swinging, throwing up the ball and swinging and missing every time. The man got out, walked over close to where he was. And you could hear the little boy, I'm the greatest hitter in the world, throwing up the ball and swinging. He did it for a long time. And the the man went over to the young boy and said, son, aren't you discouraged? He said, no, I'm the greatest hitter in the world. So the man kind of backed off and watched. He kept doing it. And finally, the boy changed his tune. He threw up the ball and he swung and he missed. And he went, I'm the greatest pitcher in the world. He had an attitude adjustment or a change in what he was looking at. I know that even in my prayers with God that I think, oh, God's not answering the way I want. But the truth is, God is answering but God doesn't need me to advise him. He's still looking at the world and what's going on. And what I realize is God is saying yes sometimes and no sometimes. But often he's saying, wait, I'm working on this. It's, it's my timing. I'm involved in what's going on. But we just can't wait for how God's going to work. And we also, God continues to pride provide hope, but do we see that God provides hope? In fact, there is hope in the future, even in the situation that you're in now. Sometimes we might need an attitude adjustment or realizing that our job is not advising God. Our job is to follow God and to listen to him and to realize the things that he has hope for us in our life. There's even another story that may be a little more cruel, that there was a, a man that didn't like a child, and so he took um, some manure and he put it in a box and gave it to the child. And the child opened up the box and he saw the manure and the child was so excited and the man was so discouraged about how could this could happen. You know, I, I was trying to discourage the child. And he said, why are you doing this? There is manure in this box. And the child said, if there's this much manure, there's got to be a pony around here someplace. I know it's not a great story, but I do know this that God continues to work in our lives. And sometimes we take things and we have made them all bad, but God is working in our lives. And he said, it's going to be okay. In fact, God wants us to know that there is grace and grace for right now. No matter what you've been through, no matter what you feel, no matter what's going on, there is grace. The second thing God wants us to know, I think, in the passage we're going to look at today in Romans chapter 5 is that there is reconciliation, that you can find healing in where you are. In fact, God says, I want you to know that everything's going to be okay if you will trust in me. You see, not everything that God has planned is answered in this life. Some of it's actually answered in the next life if you believe in the resurrection. And I do. And I hope you do too. That God is constantly working and God is more concerned about you being with him in heaven than he is about you having the greatest time right now. But he wants to give us joy. So God says, hey, there is grace for now and there's reconciliation. In fact, that when we look at Romans chapter 5, and I hope that you'll read this later on, that there's a couple things that because of Christ, number one, you have hope. No matter what your situation, no matter what you're going through, no matter what your future looks like or what your past looks like or what your present looks like, there is hope. You have it because of Christ, verses 1 through 5. In fact, there's this idea that this, the Spirit is right there with us and He's helping us no matter what we're dealing with. Number 2, verses 6 through 8. Christ died for sinners, so you are loved. You need to know that you are loved. It makes a difference in your world right where you are right now. That no matter what, no matter what's going on, no matter what you feel with other people, no matter what broken relationships you have, whatever, Christ loves you. And then verses 9 and 11 is because of the resurrection, you have confidence. That even if you feel broken or wonder how you can get through this, God provides confidence for you. Now, there's some hard things in this text because it says, Suffering really produces good stuff, and I know that we often don't feel that, and we do not want to go through suffering, but there's no questions that hard things in my life have produced better things in my life. Not everything that's hard, but often through hard things, I've learned a lot. 
The other part of this text that may be a little hard for us to stand is the idea that God gives us his spirit to help us through. And we wonder, what does that look like? Well, I think it somewhat looks different for each person, but God's spirit is involved in what's going on. And that God's timing isn't ours. And that's what I struggle with. Because just at the right time, God is acting. You see, God has continued to demonstrate his love for us, and we should rejoice. Instead of getting upset because things didn't work out the way that I wanted, that God is still at work and God is doing good things. There's no question that God has worked even through the pandemic that we're in and even through the racial rights. But we hold on to God and find ways to rejoice and ways to connect to people and realize that God's timing is better than ours. Even though Satan wants to be in control and Satan is all about chaos and all about fear, that God is still active. You see, we need to change and we change because of our hope. I was with a family and they were struggling because there was a diagnosis of cancer and it was extremely dim. And so they said, I just want to find hope. Now, God doesn't always answer this way, but for that family, God gave them more years. Didn't completely take care of cancer, although there was a time of cancer free, but the answer to that is, here are some more years. I will tell you selfishly for uh, people in my life, I've often prayed that they will be here longer, but I think sometimes I've prevented them from the eternal glory because of my own sense of loss. In the midst of your world, God is at work. Will you trust him with it? You're going to hear from just a few minutes from Samantha Mankey. I've had the privilege of knowing Samantha, and God has really helped her through some amazing things death of both their parents, some abuse and other things. But God has constantly answered. She's chosen to follow him. She's been a witness, and I hope that you'll listen to the things in her life. But listen to this, the very end of Romans chapter 5. So, Christ will surely save us from God's anger because we have been made right with God by the blood of Christ's death. While we were God's enemies, he made us his friends through the death of his son. Surely now that we are his friends, we will be saved through the son's life. And now, not only that, but we will also be very joyous in God through Christ our Savior. Through him, we are now God's friend again and have confidence. May you find confidence in this world. Hey, um, my name's Samantha, and uh, I'm a graduate from Harding, so um, I'm here to tell you my story. Um, growing up, didn't really have a great childhood um, in a way that people think I did. Um, my parents never went to high school or went to college, and so stepping into my teenage years was kind of difficult and kind of establishing who I was and who I wanted to be. Um, so I met a high school history teacher when I was in ninth grade, and um, she kind of led me to Harding, went through the Upper Bound program, and that was a big part of how God intervened in my life. Um, when I was 19 years old, sophomore at Harding, and I studied nursing, um, my mom had a massive heart attack suddenly. And um, to that, I could say that was probably the most traumatic thing that's ever happened in my life up to this point. Um, every a night for about a good solid three days, I'd come in late because I was studying with friends and stuff. And, um, and so I woke up on a Tuesday morning and had 30 missed calls on my phone. And I called my sister, who was 16 at the time, and she said, hey, like, mom's in the ER, like, she had a heart attack, and I'm like, and, you know, I kind of blame myself for it, because I'm like, oh, what did I do, you know, as I'm a bad daughter, you know, all this stuff, and so, anyway, like, I rushed there, and I never got to say goodbye to my mom, which I regret, you know, in a way, it, it's like, I'm 19, and I'm losing my mom, and, you know, I felt my life was falling apart, and so, um, that, that was over a span of three days, that, you know, I watched mom pass away, and I'm like, when she passed away at that, you know, at that very moment, I'm like, you know, well, 
what's going to happen when I graduate school? I mean, even going to graduate school like I am now. Like, she's not going to be there, you know, when I get married, all these things. And so, um, that, to this point, is still hard. But, I mean, God has put me, you know, like, got me through it. And, uh, which I'm grateful for is during that time. And even b- before that time, like I said, he's put people in my life to help me through it. Um, he's put Heather in, in my life, which is my high school history teacher. He's put Upper Abound in my life to guide me and love me because I wasn't necessarily there for the academics. I was there for the social and the emotional stability and the family that I have created over the time. Um, I had a, I mean, I had friends, but whole, I have a whole lot more friends than I did back then. And um, the really biggest thing that helped me through all this is being involved in church. I know that's kind of cliche and everything, but um, just being involved in older ladies' Bible class, like Sunday morning Bible class with Dr. Casey, it's been really helpful for me and kind of getting grounded on who I am in God because I know I'm not the only one that struggles with that. Everyone else does struggle with that from time to time. Um, being involved in um, my other peers, Bible studies as well. Um, I was never involved in a social club per se, but uh, and I'm I'm okay with that. But I know at Harding, like, I, like like I said, I created a family, like. I literally, you know, I joke and say, I have more moms than I can count. And I don't know if that's a blessing or not, in a way. But it, it is a blessing, you know. Um, and it's like, you know, I mean, like again, it's still hard. But it's like, God has me where he wants me. Because, you know, during that time, I was in nursing school. And in 2018, um, I was dismissed from the nursing program. And I thought my life was over, you know. I thought... My love for nursing, my love to help people was just like, I don't know what else to do. And um, so anyway, um, I was in therapy at that time, which therapy also helps too. But I'm going to go on that in a minute. But um, so I kind of was like, okay, God, where do you want me? Like, I know this is your plan for me. Like, what would, you know, be, be, because I totally thought that God wanted me to be a nurse because of, of the fact that, you know, my mom died when I was 19. I thought, man, this, this is what I was predestined to do. And no, um, at this point in my life, I am in graduate school for counseling. And I really think that's uh, where God wants me to be because, I mean, I have a perfect GPA. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that I've never made sure it's in my whole entire life. And I'm like, okay, and I love it. And there's a good support system again. It's a, it's a Harding. It's where I'm comfortable and so, um, I think that's just pretty cool. But I really think when you're going through a dark time in your life, I think God placed therapy in my path. And having a counselor, like now, especially, has helped me get through a lot of things, especially recently when my dad has passed away in February. So, um, the biggest thing I want you guys to learn from this is you're not as small as what you think you are. God is a there with you even though you don't feel him and he even puts people in your life that you seem like they don't really understand but in my history they really don't but they try and so um I think trying is better than just winging it I guess you could say and so um I just really feel that stay humble because this is a life journey for me that I still fight every single day. There's a lot of negative thoughts that go through my mind. Um, so it's just, God has put me through a roller coaster, but he's not left me.